Yeah, 60, boom. It's a fast car. And the car I'm in today, for me, is a little bit of an unsung hero in the car industry. It's a Golf R estate. Obviously a Golf R is, everyone loves a Golf R, everyone loves the hatchback, lots of, you know, they sold them in droves. But I don't understand why not as many people bought the estate. Now, maybe it's the looks, maybe it's the fact that people wanted to have a hatchback, I don't really know, but the Golf R estate it has a 225 litre bigger boot with a max load capacity of 1,620 litres. It's an enormous boot. I have two big dogs and they fit in it absolutely beautifully. And all you give up for that extra convenience, effectively, is 0.1 seconds, 0 to 60. So this car will still do 0 to 60 in 4.9 seconds, has 296 horsepower, this is the facelift model, which basically you get new lights, new bumpers. Um, the estate car unfortunately only comes with the seven speed DSG gearbox. It's a fantastic gearbox, but if you wanted a manual, you'd have to have the hatchback. In all of these hot hatches and supercars and sports cars and everything these days, everything is getting so unbelievably fast that it's a bit of a breath of fresh air to drive something that you can really use and utilize all of the performance on a lovely B road. Today I've come up to the Brecon Beacons in Wales and it is stunning up here. I mean, Wales on a good day is brilliant, but, and today is one of the best days I've ever seen up here. Gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Oh, it just goes, it goes around corners brilliantly. It's got loads of front end grip and the four wheel drive system really helps you out, but it helps you out to a point where the car still feels nimble and agile and like you could, you know, you can move it around a little bit. It's, it's really great fun. And there's a few cars out there that I know there's obviously front wheel drive cars that you can trail brake in and you can really get the back end moving. It's not about that. It's the, it's the, it's the way it makes you feel along the way. And this car feels great. It's, as I say, you've got loads of front end grip, but you can you can get the weight over the nose of the car as you go into a corner and there's a little bit of movement. It's, it's a really, really cool thing to drive. And it's just really nice to be able to use all of the performance a lot of the time. You know, you get in something like the RS6 or the turbo videos that I've done before. If you haven't watched those, go and, go and check those out. But you drive those and all you're doing is managing the vast speeds so you're continuously on the brakes, you're changing through gears, but you're only using a couple of the gears in reality. This you can really enjoy. You can get through first, second, third, fourth, and you can use more of it more of the time, which makes it just so much more fun. I don't understand how all of these manufacturers have managed to eke so much power and performance out of these tiny little engines. They're absolutely fabulous. This one in particular is a lovely little engine and it revs all the way to six and a half and it, it just, you know, it, it feels great. Feels great. Sounds great. Get some pops and bangs on, on the overruns when you, when you change down the, through the gearbox. This two litre four cylinder engine is absolutely lovely and it's, you know, it sounds great, but it sounds induction noisy, but they're also, you know, they're piping it in through the speakers. I don't know what people think about that, but I don't really care. It sounds good to me and yeah, that's all that really matters. The steering is lovely. It's got four different modes. It's got eco, normal, race and individual. I use individual. I put everything as per with everything else. I put it in comfort steering, maximum attack with everything else. And that for me is the nicest the car can be. The gearbox, the seven speed DSG gearbox, as we all know, VW are the absolute daddies at 
the double clutch gearbox. This gearbox is fantastic. It's fast and absolutely seamless. It goes down exactly when you want it to. Hey, this thing. What a great little car. And out on these roads in the Breckens. Oh, got to get a wriggle on. Woohoo! It's, it's just really good fun. But you're not, you know, in the turbo or something like that. You'd be going so unbelievably fast that you'd go to prison, firstly. And secondly, you know, you've got to be pretty good to be able to manage those sort of speeds and everything's happening so fast. This, this has a lovely sense of feel and, and, and playfulness that you can really enjoy on a B road or an A road. And it will sit happily on a motorway and do 32 miles to the gallon, 35 if you drive really, really steadily in eco mode. The infotainment system and the display in front of you is absolutely fantastic. It's typical VW, so it's very similar to the RS6. So you've got all of the digital clocks in front of you. You can change all the views to the map. You can change it to have the speed in front of you. You can have the radio, answer the phone, do anything you want to do on here, as well as you can on the center console. And it all works. You know exactly where everything is because it's a VW, because it's a Golf. You know, you could be the richest man on the planet and still own one of these. It, you know, you'd be seen as, as being a bit of a legend, I think. I really like the look of the Golf R Estate because they're rarer. When you do see one, you have to be, sort of be like, oh, oh, is it, is it, isn't it? I don't know, oh, is the R? You see the tiny little R on the, on the bumper and that's the only real giveaway. And then when you see it from behind, you see obviously the big four exhausts. But other than that, it's understated. You can drive it about quietly. You don't have to drive it about like a lunatic everywhere. You know, this is actually, I've got a bit of confession to make. This is actually my car. And as I say, I go on to everyone about how great these are. And then I was looking at BMW M3s and things like that to buy. And I thought, do you know what? This, this is ridiculous. Why am I buying an M3 or something like that when everybody that asks me what should I buy for the sort of 20 to 30,000 pound mark? And I tell them all the time, buy a Golf R. As everyone knows, I like to talk about the touch points of a car. Now, this one, steering wheel, absolutely lovely. It's the same as most other VW products. It feels premium and expensive. Um, it's got the Golf sort of ball situation going on here. It looks very nice. The Paddles are pretty horrible, if I'm totally honest with you. They're plastic and they're really small and I don't like them at all. Um, but they work, they're very fun functional as with most things VW. Everything else in here, the, the brake is brilliant. It's not too sharp. They're strong. Uh, steel's on this. Yeah, they're, they're very good. Uh, the accelerator in all the different modes changes. So in eco mode, the accelerator <laughs> goes all the way to the floor before anything happens. Um, in normal mode, it's absolutely lovely to drive around town, etc. And then when you put it in race mode or you have it in individual mode and you can set it up any way you want it, it's much sharper and there's absolutely no lag whatsoever from this engine. It's fantastic. The seats in this car are really good and they're really nice. They've got the R badge and they've got this sort of suede Alcantara situation going on. Really nice and very tactile, lovely. So what is the reason behind everyone buying the hatchback over the estate version of the Golf R? Now, we've talked about the lights and we've talked about the fact you can only have it in the DSG gearbox, but why? This is only 80 kilograms heavier than the hatchback. You can get the whole family in and you've got an enormous boot for the dog. I, I don't get it. And it also makes some of the big hitters seem really quite expensive. The RS6 I tested was 135,000 pounds. Now, this brand new, you can stick 100 grand in your Skyrocket and you can have a Golf R estate. I mean, it becomes very difficult to justify other things when you say it like that. If you're looking at spending between 20 odd to 38, 40, 
go and drive a Golf R Estate. If you're looking for an estate car, but you've actually thought, do you know what, I'm gonna go and drive an A4 diesel or something like that, go and drive the little 300 horsepower hot hatchback that has all the convenience of all those cars, but is way more fun to drive. The insurance isn't vastly expensive. The only costs 120 pounds a year in tax. It's a Golf. It rides really, really nicely. It's very compliant on UK roads. About to go over cattle grid. Didn't break my spine. But it's great, honestly. I think, as I say, this is the unsung hero of the car industry at the moment, and people should pay more attention to them because it's bloody fantastic. <laughs>